Hey guys, we're here at Base Damage. This is Matt Brower. It's been a while since I've done an intro, so I, intro, so I figured I'd do one. Um, this is podcast number 25, and I am here with... Kool-Aid! And... Moroku. So, we've got a short cast, but we've got two Kal- and a half of the people that started this thing. Kalku want, said he wanted... Uh, or Joe said he wanted to go to the North Carolina Comic Con that was going on today, and I don't blame him for that. But uh, So we'll see what's really important. Yeah, Kyle. Not his waifu. <laughs> if that's yeah, actually, you got unless a point he there. found comics pertaining to his waifu, to which I don't fault the man. He probably Anywho. coming back with a lot of porn. Just, just saying. <laughs> I believe it. We're gonna call him out on this podcast right now. Just anyway, um, but go ahead and get you down to announcements. We have, uh, what was it like last week? This got announced for the new sets. It's last week. Uh, yeah, sometime okay. last week. Um, Persona Five, um, is coming over here in English. And big surprise. Yeah. Yeah. It basically Ace, we're gonna sell this game. Here's a set to go with it. Play this card game too. Yeah. yeah I mean, that damn true. It's a good marketing strategy, but plus I people in America fall. have been flipping the fuck out over Persona Five anyway, so eh. I mean I would too if I got you know, if the game kept getting pushed back. <sighs> yeah, you're right. It's not like Kingdom Hearts or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point there. Shots fired. Eleven years now? Ain't that the damn truth. Shit, that's a good point. It's still gonna be better than the than Duke Nukem game. Oh, <laughs> yeah, anything's better than Duke Nukem. Yeah. And at the same time, supposedly at the same time that Japan is getting the Bang Dream booster uh, booster pack booster set, we should be getting it as well. So, yeah, but we saw as of got right the now, Plus, so. our local the hasn't got actual yet. release date is unknown because yeah. they basically announced three different dates. Yeah. And no one knows. Which one's the Suppos- actual date? Supposedly P five is in June, so I'm guessing Bang Dreams in July. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the way but, they need um, to do try to space on the back that of the trial deck, it actually says it's going to be released in September. But it was on a to pamphlet, happen. it said something about August, and then yeah, I mean the last announcement was like July. Eh. So it's crapshoot, essentially. Like, Every other set we've gotten here lately. I just want to get the Trial Deck Plus because reasons. Yeah. Uh, it just seems so funny to me. Well, yeah, if we ever got I it. find it very, very funny that they're like, yeah, we'll do a Trial Deck Plus because we're not going to give you anything else. Oh, wait. Psych. Boost your pack. Yeah. Oh, you mean people are actually getting hyped for this because of the Trial Deck Plus? Well, maybe after they get the Trial Deck Plus, they'll come and buy Booster Pack. Booster. The Booster. Booster Deck. Yeah. The Booster Deck. Booster Deck. The hell kind of language are we talking right now? I don't know. I can't talk good. It's all good. I, you do words good. I do words good. Yes. There you go. Um, the other thing being, uh, uh, go ahead and mentioning our buddy Chris Cohn, his uh, charity stream that he's doing. They uh, stream uh, a D and D campaign, and every month they are doing a. Uh, they're all proceeds that they get from that. Uh, any donations that they get from that are going straight to a particular charity. 100%. Um, yeah. So uh, they're continuing with the Children's Miracle Network, to my knowledge, for this month. So they will uh, be continuing that. If y'all would please check him out, link in the description. Be uh, much appreciated to him and us as well. Because he's a really cool guy and uh, for charity. Like, I, like it's, I especially enjoy when uh, uh, AGDQ, uh, the, the Games Done Quick, come around every mm-hmm. year. Because that's some of the most amazing things to watch. Is for, well, that's for speed runs. Like I probably yeah. wouldn't want. I mean, like, I probably should check out the D and D thing. Like I, I'm not personally a D and D player, but uh, to each their own. Mm-hmm. Challenge speed run D and D. Um, there are DMs that actually have timers for on turn limits because some people just take. I, I believe it. I completely understand that. <clears throat> I'm going to enforce that next time I run a campaign. Yeah, and as of last weekend, um, this is March nineteenth. So, this is Sunday. The previous week. I want to say it was the previous week for uh, Dallas. The results for the Dallas regionals have been posted. Um, Now, go ahead and mention what you told me, because I did not find out about this until later, until you said something about it. Uh, Apparently, they uh, only ran, I believe, five rounds for the top cut. Even though the prerequisite number that they had dictated that they should have had seven. At least. before, Before cut. Yeah. I, I don't remember the exact number of participants, but it was something along the lines of 800 to 1,000. Okay, so they cut the top early. They didn't just yeah, they, end it. 
All right. Yeah. They cut the top early, mm. but because of how pairings had worked mm. out, there are a lot of undefeateds, and there are a lot of people that had uh, one loss. Mm. Uh, and a lot, of, them just a got lot of the one losses basically got dice rolled and was out of top cut instead of continuing two more rounds. That's and then, but see, that's just so weird to me. That is weird. Yeah, but so I don't know if that was like an organizer thing or what. But come that, on, Bushy Road. That, well, that just makes me seem like like they were pushed for time. Which, yeah. you know, we're going to reference a podcast we were talking a while back about people fucking slow playing like shit. Yeah. Well, just saying. Even then, they have uh, timers in, like, regional organized Yeah, but even like, if you, even like with Yu-Gi-Oh! And they would go into time yeah. in Yu-Gi-Oh! I've still seen people in time, quote-unquote, because air quotations on an audio podcast is yeah. great. Um, still take another 30 fucking minutes. Uh, yeah. In time. I know. Just, because at that point, it's based by turns. Not, not by time. not by an actual time limit. Yeah, I don't know how Bushiro does time or after time. So because yeah. I mean, we never had that issue. Yeah, that's true. Shit, we started at like two today and like finished like an hour and a half, like yeah. a three round tournament. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, but based on whatever shenanigans had to go on, um, the ending results were first place was Riaz Muhammad running two of root. I'm guessing Yami Khan. Yami Khan. Um, second is Vincent Ha. Um, yeah, it's his last name. Ha. H-A. Uh, running Log Horizon, which was apparently like the rogue, holy crap, why is this doing good against Tua Vru type thing? Um, yeah. Well, he, he deserves that ha. Yeah. yeah. Third place was Carlos Smith running SAO. And uh, fourth place was... Uh, fourth place isn't usually like put up on the... Uh, the English Weiss site, like I haven't seen them posted up uh, any of these just yeah. yet either. It's usually top three. Yeah, but I wanted to go, I wanted to just kind of give an honorable um, honorable mention to uh, one of the other people in our podcast group, um, whose channel is Stock Soul, um, Andres Hernandez, running uh, Cinderella Girls Asterix, uh, the Asterix build. Um, so he ended up getting fourth place at that, which was pretty cool. Um, in the time that I've known him, dude man knows his stuff. So. Uh, so shout outs to you, bro. Uh, uh, I may have to hit you up later and see, uh, like if you know, like details on what the hell happened with, uh, the top cut issue. Yeah. He'd be the one to ask. Yeah. Cause he was there. He was actually there. Yeah. Which I actually found out uh, about Riaz Muhammad, the guy who won it, um, from a, another person we had mentioned, I think it was a podcast or two ago. Yeah, it's been a few. Some of that. Um, we got messaged by the person who won the Texas regionals last year, which uh, apparently that had occurred before we started doing podcast. So we had, we didn't cover that one. Yeah. We, we didn't talk about that one in any way, shape or form, but dude man messaged me, uh, emailed me and said, you know, Hey dude, uh, I really like what y'all do. I'd love to be able to get in on a podcast at some point. Here are my credentials. And I checked the English twice site and sure enough, dude, man, won it um, with flick girls. Um, so I, Called him up uh, earlier this week. Uh, Skype call, basically testing out OBS. Why the fuck are you just randomly shuffling it? Oh my god! I, I was just gonna do it, but I decided it's a bad idea because it's gonna cut, pick up on the there you go. recorder. You're fine. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but uh, yeah, uh, and basically just uh, kind of interviewed him and went on uh, talked to him about like how that tournament was, how his matchups were. Um. Really cool dude. Um, that, that that has already been recorded and will be posted up next week, so we already have the podcast after this already ready to be posted. So that'll be up next week. Um, really cool dude. And he told me that about Riaz Muhammad. Um, I think he said he goes to the same locals. I had to listen back over the, uh, the recording again. Um, but he said that he's learned a lot from this guy. So dude man must know his stuff. So... Really cool, and obviously two love Rue. I'm ready to see two love Rue just start wrecking tournaments. Well, it's already started. Yeah. So, which apparently you had told me about the Log Horizon. Um, yeah. Because the level three Shiroe just throw him back row and you basically locked out the end game for Yami Khan. Yeah. Um. It basically ha- has an ability that just says you do not take damage from your opponent's auto you attacks. You told me. You told me. It's just, that's beautiful. It's like the first fucking effect up there, if I'm not mistaken. You want to you uh, cancel burn? Something. I don't think so. Cancel burn. 
uh, burn on play, burn on play, yeah. any of that jazz. Throw backpacks. Throw backpacks like you. Throw yeah. backpacks. Um, magical girl. Try to burn for three. That's Kaleidoscope true. gives no. Uh, they, they give no fucks against Kaleidoscope. Yeah. She always like come at me, bro. Yeah. It's just their love deck requires such a specific setup though mm-hmm. that it's. I don't know how the dude got it. I mean, understandably, you only need the one Shiro A to be able to set up that. But if they have removal, it's usually nice to have two of them up there. Yeah. The other thing being. Spin triggers are a thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Yami Khan Yami has, has a playset of them. That's for damn sure. Um, the other thing being that they dropped the level 3 Natsugu that has bodyguard. The. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's really awesome because he gets huge, and then the Shiro A's just buff him up even more. But I guess just getting what, having all the stock that you need and everything, um, I give kudos to the to the dude for even getting second place and getting that far, yeah. which he did play Riaz in the last round. Right. So he he ended up losing to it, even though that's supposed to be like one of his better matchups. Yeah. But, but I mean, again, specific setup required for a specific deck. Ballad. I mean, you miss one of the cards, or you miscount your stock once, your setup's dead. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I hope y'all will enjoy listening to the interview that I had with uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Asper. Um, or some of y'all might know him by his nickname, Zeus. I don't know. Um, also, I apologize if I sound a little quiet. I'm recovering from a little bit of a bug or something I had the other day. I don't know. Um, but getting into this, uh, you actually, uh, Moroku actually brought up an interesting topic because we talked about in one of the podcasts a while back, I think it was in the early teens, talking about level three, like the level three finishers specifically. Um, we didn't go into exact detail on like level three setup. I think we touched up on uh, Bakemono Guitari because they run like fucking 12 level threes. Yeah, experienced decks will run a heavy, heavy level three count. They have to, and it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy how required it is for them. Yeah. Um, understandable, sure. I ain't gonna fault them for that. Yeah. Um, Plus, if they can't get it, it's like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, because I can see, like, a setup there where even if you're just going into level one and you have a level three, but it's not the right color that you need for the next thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if you go over, like, especially because a lot of those... You're color stuck at that point. You're still color stuck at that point, even though you need the experience count. And it's like, fuck. Yeah. I've had that bite me in the ass before. Yeah. What was, uh like, I think the highest experience I've ever seen was, like, eight. You can get nine. There is a nine? I mean, I know the highest you can get is nine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just don't uh, think I've ever seen an experience count of nine. The highest one I've personally seen is experience of six. I've seen. Oh, that. I've done yeah. six before. Yeah. You have six off of uh, one of yours, isn't it? Two. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten like seven. Usually six is about as high as I go because I put. I only need five, so I usually just go six anyway. And then after that, it doesn't matter what I put in there, so took a level zero in there for level three. Well, you got like eight level threes anyway. It doesn't matter, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that works. Well, plus yours isn't really too terribly color stuck. That's true. Yours well, is only like two colors, where I, whereas of, a lot of the other shit, like Jax's build was like three colors. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, Umi does it on a regular basis because it's part of the strategy, so I get to six on that, and then yeah, I but sit there. yours is not yeah. experience based on level. Yours it's is experience on card, based but on that card is a level three. Valid point. Right. I'll give you that. So I'm going for experience level six always. At least. Um, That's a major, major part of the strategy there. Yeah. Like, we kind of, we, we touched up on most of the finishers between, like, clock shoot, uh, cancel burn, stuff like that. We went over yeah. favorite level threes just because of effects. Cause yeah. Um, But Roku brought up the idea to me that uh, we probably should try to cover the other levels as well. Specifically, you mentioned level zero. To which I figured that would be a very good uh, good thing to touch up on. Well, it's important as... to know when you're first building a deck. Absolutely. Yeah. That's your bread and butter. Like, this, start. literally what was told to me when I started playing was, you pick your level threes, and then you pick your level zeros. Yeah. And just yeah. go from there. No stock equals no game. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we've all had that moment before. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So, first thing I just kind of wanted to go around the table here was, uh, um... As far as level zero is concerned, the number of level zeros that you more choose to run. Um, personally, it really depends on what I'm playing because, like, when I was using the sweets deck, that used like 17 or 18, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. But that's because of how much utility that it had between Winter Moment Akatsuki effects, 
um, and just a bunch of other stuff. It's just kind of stuff that you needed to have, and I really couldn't afford to not run them. Yeah. So and some sets do have level zeros that are useful the entire game. Yeah. Exactly. Um, case in point, the level zero Mikon, like you, you had to run four of that thing in the Yamikon deck just straight up because at any point in the game, as long as you have cards in your clock, you basically have access to almost a second hand. Yeah. One card from it, admittedly, but fucking shit. It's it's one of the most, it's one of my favorite cards from that deck. Yeah. Um, so number for me has kind of fluctuated. Used to I would try to go for sixteen, about sixteen even. Some decks I've dropped it down as low as thirteen to fourteen. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I mean, I try to stick around sixteen, but um, I know that the Weapon Heiress build that I run runs like fourteen. Mm-hmm. But some of the other decks, like uh, Idol Master, I'm trying out 16. Well, you also don't plan to be at level 0 for too particularly mm-hmm. long. Right. That's true. It's also the other issue of like getting particular combos set up yeah. early on. Uh, Kantai being stuff like the Hibikis to get the Vernies, mm-hmm. yeah. the Winter Moment of Kotskis. That's, that's 8 cards right there before anything else. Between hot suits, between all this other stuff, you're definitely having to run a, a, a set lot. of utility cards. Yeah. But, once again... Level zero has become useful during most of the game, especially I mean, because of colors. You don't get color fucked on it. Yeah. So. And they're always going to be viable just for the color. Exactly. I mean, I usually run about fifteen to sixteen, but it all depends on on the deck. Usually fifteen to sixteen. Um. A good example is Hachikuji, but I was going for a waifu deck, so I had to stuff four of whatever zeros I could find for that. Valid but point. as you see, on getting color stuck. Uh, since I usually splash a color and don't need it to level three, like with the Congo Bongo I ran today, yeah, you know, level zero of the right color that's global fives, they're useful when you drop them, they're useful when you're going for the color, so that sort yeah. of thing is super important. That's usually what you're kind of going for, like, especially with three color decks, you gotta basically, you get you gotta get a lot of your extra color stuff in at level zero. Hi, Harry. Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, but uh, it's cool. Um, but anyway, it's whatever. Um, but basically, the setup for that. Uh, once again, I hate. To, I, I know Moroku gets tired of me talking about fleet girls, but uh, <laughs> so what I ended up having to do when I had I had blue green, which was the Hagoro and Akagi Kai, and I just it had extra level threes uh, Hugo Kai that did the clock shoot. But then I figured for a different setup, I wanted to splash in Musashi. But I'm like, well, fuck, I need to put in, you know, yellow, uh, yellow yeah. and just went with hot suits and compass, and that's it. Because hot suit yeah. goes in every Kantai deck. And compass isn't going to be used until late game anyway. Almost every Kantai deck. Almost. Until, unless you're Matt with, you know, the salvage triggers and shit. Salt, 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 salt. Yeah. Mm. He actually asked me if I had an extra Hatsukaze today. It was funny. I wanted to see what your reaction was. Yeah. So I looked down and went... I don't have any back row global fives. I should ask for one to see if I can. No, I let Phil yeah. grab the last one that I had. Uh, last extra fun. one. And he bugged me about it because now he's got. Now he's got like two or three. Yes. Ah, I hate that bitch. Yeah. Um, but now you got to worry about uh Mekon as well. Yeah. I don't. Don't worry. I've seen her already. She pisses me off. Yeah. I had to give up on a salvage trigger today because of that. Just one though. So sad. Only one. <laughs> Only one. I think one. Timmy felt in the shop challenge against me. He basically was running eight salvage triggers I and I had two hot suits down. No, because I played you. I played you that other time and I literally got three or four salvage triggers that I just had to give up on because the Congo Bonga runs eight of them. No, that's not right. Runs four of them. You, yeah, yeah. Umi runs runs eight of them. No, the deck he was running, which was the uh, the burn thing, mm-hmm. the burn uh, fucking jewel deck. Yeah. yeah. Runs eight salvage triggers. Yeah, Umi does too. I've, yeah. I've seen it happen. Oh, yeah, because you, you almost salvaged against that, too, when I was running out. Well, I was testing out uh, Yamikon that one time. Three. I had to give up on three salvage triggers. So, yeah. so in reference to that, the various utility effects mm-hmm. between anti-salvage, between a lot of different search effects. Like, some of the effects that you showed me today in the deck that you were running, Moroku. Yeah. Um, really, really interesting um, That's true, because a lot of the stuff in that is really awesome looking. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it is based around the utility of them, but mm-hmm. it's just... You're getting sometimes kind of, you get fucked. Yeah. And for our audience, we were talking about 
Is it uh, mono yellow Idol Master? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which, I mean, in all theory, the compression of that deck is ridiculous if you get it running mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, we just have to fix up level one, uh, basically. I'm considering changing up level zero as well. You probably could. Maybe, maybe a little bit. But, like, uh, one of the cards you specifically mentioned was on play. It, you can pay one stock. Um, I can't remember her name. Um, uh, I think it's Irie or something. Irie. Um, that she gave, she got an additional soul, but then at the end of the turn, she you send her to memory. Yeah. To which I thought that was actually fairly interesting because early on, dig a, dig some climaxes out of the stock and compression for late game. So, yeah. Um, just interesting little things here and there. Um, search utility stuff like Murasame Kai or mm. Clumsy Girl Inanuma. Um, brainstorms. Brainstorms is a separate thing. I'm talking. Utility mostly being like the Mekon. Straight okay. The level zero Mekon, it's like the interesting, unique effects is more what I'm going for here. Because it's stuff like that that you're not going to see in every set. Obviously, anti-salvage with Mekon, you're not going to see in every set or yeah. Hatsukaze. I mean, it, I, I say utility as things that are more unique to those sets. Like that, the, the Irie that we were talking about for you, I don't think I've seen that in any other set currently in English. I specifically am limiting myself to what I've seen in English. <clears throat> Probably not out here. I think it does exist in other sets, but I don't think we've ever seen it out here. Purple poo, yeah. No. No. <laughs> but uh, going on the topic of brainstorms. Okay. I mean, that's just another one of those things that comes around in level zero usually. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, okay, so we'll just, we'll just kind of bounce around this. Favorite type of brainstorm. Since I started off with the... Uh, the number, the favorite, like, personal I recommended mean, that's number. That's hard of. to pick because yeah. it's either yellow for search or red for salvage. I prefer to do red for salvage because I can. Green can do search too. That's yeah. true. Well, some some red can do search as well, but yeah. I'd prefer to do salvage because. Isn't your Hachikuji? Is that search? That's search. That's yellow. Okay, go, go. And there's a Sinjo Gahara yeah. that, that does salvage, but it's a pumpable uh, hand swap salvage, so. Pumpable hand swap? It's a, not pumpable, uh, spammable, my bad. Oh, spammable, okay, good rule. Yeah, the one he's referring to is a tap, tap two, one stock, top four search for strange. Mine's definitely the search ones. Yeah. Like, just. Well, I just prefer salvage because I can check what's in my, my waiting room at any time. Valid point. Because I've had bad moments where I've ended up searching for something that all the copies were in my stock or clock and been like, Fuck. Yeah, if you can get it set up right so that you have a lot of cards in your waiting room when mm. that goes off, you're golden. Yeah. Well, as I tend to not just cancel, I right. end up with lots of stuff in my waiting room fairly quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um. So my personal favorite search, what would yours be? Definitely search. Search, and you're saying salvage? Uh, search, search or salvage? Salvage, preferably, if I have to choose between one or the other. Because the other one's being, like, spammable pump, spammable soul increase. Mm. Yeah. Soul um, increases aren't bad. I but. saw a very interesting level zero Mari brainstormer. Mm -hmm. That uh, it, uh, I've seen some spammable ones that for every climax you hit, give two thousand power to the end of the turn. Sure. The Mari gave a thousand power, but it was until the end of your opponent's next turn. That's not bad. I like that because of just how long the buff lasts. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It's actually pretty cool. Um, uh, soul the increase. only other brainstormer I can think of is the clock swap. Clock swap. Yeah, which those are really effective as well. Yeah. Um. Those just tend to be more situational. It That's really does depend. You don't um, rely on those quite as much. Yeah. Nah. Um. I mean, when they work, they work because that's all that Kanta had for a long while. We didn't. Uh, Kanta didn't get their searching one, which is Takitsu Kaze, until the second set. So they, we had to just work with Clumsy Girl to do until then. Yeah, a whole month or so. No, it was a long <laughs> time. It was like a fucking year. Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. I have clock shoot, you don't. Feel bad for the Excel World players. Ain't that uh, the damn truth? Uh, not, gonna have anything. not getting infinite burst is like a sad face. Um, I'm sorry, I have a playable deck with one set. Oh, you get us? You got a new set? Mm. Sad face. Mm -hmm. Just so much sad face. Um, I don't see the, the next one. I don't see you running this as much. Ha, running. Um, the different runners. Yeah. I've had to deal with that for several decks. Yeah. Well, um, I don't think I've ever had a deck that runs runners, mostly because everything I run doesn't get them. Yeah. Yeah. 
But uh, I dislike them. Yeah. You haven't been, uh... There's I've, some... Uh, very, I'm sorry. very rarely, very rarely do I have to deal with one of these. Yeah. He, he got very aggravated today in a game. I was running uh, two over aliens. And there's a Lala that's a runner. He dropped... I, I, I'm going to play Shimikaze, then I'm going to play fast like Shimikaze. But you're faster than Shimikaze, because you're going to go, nope, 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 and just hop away. I just ran bitch. right in front of my Kaze so he wouldn't get the search. Mm-hmm. You little bitch. He, he, he was very, very sad about I knew that. it was going to happen, but that doesn't make it any less aggravating. I wouldn't have dropped the second Shimikaze at that point. Especially because I only had one character to reverse anyway. It's all right. I didn't have anything else to play, and I had to push for the damage. Valid point. Um, it ended up working for me barely. Haha. Um... So, different runners being... Let's see, that Lala worked off of a Resonate, mm. which is really cool as, uh, as far as runner ability. Yeah, that's easily... easily done. The best. Yeah. Mm. Like, the level zeros, um, there's a Kuro, there's a Kirito yeah. from SAO. Um, both of those basically work off milk the top card of your deck, and if it's a certain trait, which, you know, for SAO's Avatar Net, whole fucking deck. Yeah. And for Kuro was for Prisma Ilya, which was magic or... I think it's just magic. I think it's just magic? Well, yeah. it's the whole fucking deck, anyway. Pretty much. So, basically, as long as you don't mill a climax, yeah. you got your running effect, which was really cool. Um, which, you didn't want to hit a climax anyway, but that's whatever. There's one in Bang Dream that I think runs for free. Yeah. I run, because I say so. The only thing is, yeah. it's weaker. Like, yeah. the ones that usually do the mill and run are, like, 25, 25 or so. Yeah. Um, this one was, like, only a 2K, but it was a free runner. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the Chitoge from... First nice boy set was a fifteen hundred. Think but right. she's a runner bomber, so yeah, she was a reverser. That's useful. So I mean, she has a price she's tag gonna to show get, it as well. She's gonna get reversed. Yeah, but she don't really care. I, I don't remember if she ran to an open spot or ran to a spot that had something up um in front of character. Yeah. Um, another interesting one I saw. Uh, reason I say you can do this from Kantai. There is a, uh, there's a level, there's a level zero, um, I can't remember her damn name, but it's a runner, but it specifically runs to the middle center of the stage. Oh, okay. yeah, I've seen some like that. Predetermined location, gotcha. Predetermined location, but it costs nothing. Yeah. So, I thought that was really cool. I Can just, it swap, or does that even open? Tanikaze, I think was her name. I think it just runs through the middle center. Just runs middle center, nothing else. So, but it has to be an open slot? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, open, middle... Middle position center stage. Well, if we can get Monogatari season two, oh I know God. that there's a Hachikuji runner, but uh, come on, there's it's too been, many, it's there's been too a while. many banned cards in it. I know. So your shit would get errated, and one of them is a Hachikuji that I don't think you want to get errated. So I don't want to run. A Shinobu. Well, uh, I don't want to run that card because it'd make me cry. Oh yeah, because yeah, never mind. Yeah, I think it's like a level zero. No, it's a level. Oh, uh, the Hachikuji is a level three. No, yeah, I'm talking about the. The Shinobu? Shinobu. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like I think zero. it was like a level two zero. Something like that. But it was like really broke sauce because you like paid two stock and bounced her and something else back when it got reversed. So I was like, well, fuck. It's not bad. I mean, it's not broken. Yeah, but it's better than... It's useful. It's it's no, good, no, but... No, that's broken because, okay, personal opinion, reason why I say it's broke. Here just comes the Kantai player's brokenness. I'm not even going to reference Kantai in this shit. This is just basic... Normally, to save a character is three st- three stock if you ain't got a clock on core or character on core. Mm-hmm. This is when this di- when this would die, pay two, mm-hmm. bounce this and another character back. Mm-hmm. It's in your hand. Mm-hmm. It's also a level zero. Okay, well, play play it something else. Suicide with both, pay two, get them both back. There you go. Yeah. And you just never run out of shit to keep playing. I mean, it's not yeah. bad. It's not great. I mean, it's not like, hey, I play this card. Hey, look. All your cards don't get Encore. That's true. Or, hey, look, I have one card. You can't use your triggers anymore. Valid. You're I mean, right. You're right. But I consider that... The ability at level zero, or to have a level zero that pays two stop, bounce itself in a card. And it, the other card could be other stuff like cost us level ones and shit like that. Yeah. To which, depending on what climax combos you have, if that's at level one and you get those climaxes again, I don't know what you would do, but it depends. Yeah. Um, wasn't there like a level one Shinobu that had a really good climax combo anyway? Like if we were specifically put this card in your deck, uh, I think there was a level one. There's maintaining existence, but she got her big. thing is um, she puts a character into the waiting room to activate her effect. On the field? Mm-hmm. You yeah. can put a back row. Yeah. That's usually what you do. 
So there may be something else that I'm that I don't know about that set that it combos with. Yeah. But really good. Yeah. Um. Also, I think uh, at the end of the turn, the Hachikuji would get bounced back anyway. Or would go to memory. Uh, yeah, she so, goes to memory. So think if you use that That's Shinobu true. to combo with that Hachikuji she to get plays the Hachikuji for free. Back. She plays for free to give Cancel Burn to, to herself and something else. Mm-hmm. So you're paying two to give Cancel Burn to two things, give it to the Shinobu, give it to her, mm-hmm. swing with both, pay two, pull them back, and then you can continue. The only thing is, does level three uh, go to memory at end of turn or end, end of, of battle? Turn. I think it's end of turn. Either way, I think it's... Uh, we have to look. We have to look. Because there are certain cards like... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, like you were talking about, Luke. Uh, level zero that I run that had the plus one soul. Yeah. At end of turn, she goes to memory. So if I decided to crash into something, it would still die. Yeah. It wouldn't go to memory. Because it's, no, it's not on the field. It's not going to go into memory from graveyard. Right. So, good point. Because if it's at end of battle, it would okay. be something different. That's true. Uh-huh. That is definitely a, because uh, end of battle or no, encore step I is think, different than end of turn. Yeah, I think that's true. Didn't the Hachikuchi also give soul? I have no clue. Or no, that's no, that's a different Hachikuchi. That's, a different Hachikuchi. that's the other level three Hachikuchi from the first okay. set. So, well, that's understandable at that point. Then. Yeah, timing, um, timing is the thing. So, I, I don't know the immediate. Well, actually, fuck. I wrote down band cards in here. You did somewhere in the back. Somewhere in the back. So let's see if I can find this shit. There you go. Um. Uh, the Hachikuji. Uh, on play, heal one. On play, give a strange character plus one soul and cancel burn. At start of Encore, send to memory. Oh, okay. Okay. So oh, okay, brings... no. Whoa, whoa. The Shinobu, when another strange is frontal, pay one and send this to waiting room. Return that character to your hand. Wow, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I don't know what the hell you're thinking either. So that's not broke souls. Hmm. <clears throat> that's just like... Okay, no, that stops, like, on reverse effects at that point. I mean, you can yeah. use that to stop, you know... And it basically clock avoids shoot. clock shoot. Yeah, right? you can that's, do that to... Like, that's a thing. Clock that's shoot like if you. you're playing level zeros to chunk block and hit your opponent for one or two. Yeah. And your opponent plays clock. That's true. That's nowhere well, as you powerful can, you as can leave, you can nowhere leave this back near as powerful. You can leave these back row. That's true. That's that's yeah. that's kind of where... And it's pick one of these. You can either run you can either run a play set of this or a play set of the other. Yeah. So there's not that many things that are banned from that. I mean, I was wrong. There are a couple that are like the pick three or pick one of. But yeah, yeah. hey, Nizi <laughs> boy, how you feeling? Yeah. Which hell, Idolmaster got more shit added to it recently on their ban list. Yeah. Okay, but uh. Yeah, definitely not as broke as you were making it out to be. I thought it was something else. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of something else. Not as good. I apologize. I'm Still very honest. interesting effect, but not as yeah. good. Still good. Um. So going right along, um, favorite reversers like the level zero reversers between just reverse the other character, mm-hmm. clock swap, stock swap, mm-hmm. or stock bomb. I think they're called. Fuck it. Um, I mean, I've only ever played zero reversers, but my least favorite is that clock swivel bullshit because I've had that screw up all sorts of fields. He, no. This this was interesting because. He clocked the level three. You know how we were talking about the experience thing earlier, which was yeah. uh, the Umi deck was with Happy Maker Umi. Yeah. He clocked yeah. that. Yeah. And drew it and, and, and did it. So he knew that once he leveled, he could put that into right. that. But he ran into the clock to the clock swap and it healed that off of his clock. Yeah. I've also had a stupid, stupid, stupid ass moment where I was running Titans. First turn, predation, predation, predation. Now I've got three level zero, zero cost five thousands. Another guy's like, clock swivel, clock swivel, something else. Cool, swing, clock swivel your shit, swing, clock swivel your shit, swing, get over your last one because it's only a thousand. I'm like, fuck you. This never happens. Yeah. So there's that moment where you have a perfect godly first turn and some guy goes, no, nah, fuck you because of clock swivel. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the fact that they do that swivel shit during the battle phase that makes them super annoying. Okay. I don't know that I've ever run reversers. If you ran them, you ran them because they were there, not because you meant to, you mean? Pretty much. Mm. Mainly because I don't think I have any zero reversers for any of the decks I currently own. Mm. Did you put the level zero Luvia in the uh, Prism Elia deck? Dude. There's a level zero... Uh, I just I just forgot her fucking. That's name. true. Because yeah. Boo Boo doesn't have any. Yeah, she's a level, she's a level zero reverser. Mm. I probably don't have any. That's probably okay. why. I say Boo Boo doesn't have any, and then there's 
Yeah, actually, now I think about it, Thank I don't God. think I think of anything you have. I have yet. so many in so many different decks. It's mm-hmm. retarded. They're useful. I mean, I, I don't know. They're, they're getting significantly less useful to me because every time I put yeah. down level zero versus, I end up pushing my opponent to the next level. It happens every mm-hmm. time. It, honestly, I don't really care for reverses because. I mean, they're, I mean, they're decent for cards that have some stupid effect that you need to get rid of, say, a level zero that pumps itself up to, like, 13,000 if it's... I mean, oh, it's some uh, stupid shit. Makigumo, yeah. I have seen some of that shit happen. Before, I mean, it, that's one thing, but for just normal play, I mean, it's... Now, I mean, you play them because they're there. You don't really go, oh, yeah, I drew my level zero reverser, so yeah. I'm going to win. It's like, oh, cool, I drew a level zero reverser. I'm going to frontal your zero and kill it because I die. Mm-hmm. Okay, pass turn. Uh, otherwise, oh, look. Oversized beater. It stays. Kill your thing. My character's still here. Yeah. Come get some. There you go. got a point there. I'd much rather have big beaters than mm-hmm. a reverser. You're right. You're I mean, right. But then someone's just going to go, oh, okay, verser your beater and... And that's be fine. Because they're still one for wanting me. That's true. I don't mind that at that point. Well, I don't know. I've seen I've seen a lot of people play a verser and then sign on level zero yeah. and make your opponent not want to swing. But if you're smart, just run over it because you're going to lose your level zeros anyway. Yeah, you're going to... Well, the problems. biggest time that would hurt you with the Kantai deck is when you want them to have level zeros on the field for when you drop Shimakazes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I understand that, but... So I can understand where you don't want to run those for that deck because then they'll purposely run into those if they know mm-hmm. you're about to be pushed to level one. Yeah. And so they get rid of their own characters. That's true. Well, the only reason I run the zero versers in the Congo Bongo is because I need the red for my level three. Oh, Satsuki, yeah. Yeah. So, I understand what you're saying, but eh. Yeah. Well, that's also if they don't get pushed to level one first. Yeah. And I, I don't see I tend to as much utility one. out of reversers than... Yeah, they're more of an interesting cards. effect than anything else. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Earlier when we were playing the test game with uh, Yamikon and you were running Kantai... Um, he had a clumsy girl eating a Duma, and I have the clock reverser Yui. Uh, yeah. So I purposely ran that into that to put the uh, clumsy girl eating a Duma into the clock, and so he wouldn't get the search. Yeah. This is another reason why I don't like clock swivels. They bug me. So yeah, he he was much sad face. Yeah, I knew I, it, was, it. I knew it was, certainly. I, has I didn't know it was coming. Merits if you're running like non reversers of Cinder Waiting Room, if you run the clock swappers. I would imagine they would have more versatility because they get around the they, if it becomes reverse search yeah. effects. They mess up your clock if you're trying to do experience or if you need color. Yeah. They mess up. But your, even then, it's you know. still top card. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't have as much. True. Well, I mean, they just I mean, it's because they mess it up. Just, it just depends. They mess up your clock. You're going to one for one someone and mess up their clock and mess up their, their field yeah. all in one go. So yeah, you're right. Those are definitely better. But, yeah. Those okay. are harder to come by. They are a lot harder to come by. That's a, a lot rarer of an ability than just a reverser. And from what I've seen, they're only in yellow so far. Uh, the one I had earlier was there's green. There's a green. Was it? Okay. It's in yellow and green. I haven't seen anything yeah. else. What was yellow? Um, When I was playing the guy, he hit me with the yellows when I was using... I think it's in... Uh, it's, in Fates, it's in Fate Stay. Oh, Fate Stay? Okay, cool. It's probably a Shiro or something. More it's either in Fate Stay or it's in AOT. AOT, uh, AOT had a level zero, which was uh, Aaron out of the trial deck, but I think that was a stock. Mm. Okay. I think that was a stock bomb. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't run stock bombs. Okay, so you say you prefer beat sticks. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Especially out here. Understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, like, especially at locals, just being able to yeah. get over shit. Now, you mean like the oversized beat sticks or... Yeah, mainly the oversized beat sticks. The uh, 3K, 35s, the 4Ks. I mean, it varies. Like the ones that do top check are really fun. Yeah, the ones that do top check and either come reverse. Those have screwed me over so many times. Yeah. As someone who plays Monogatari, I'm going to play this oversized beating level zero. It's going to get shuffled in my deck because I have flipped over Climax. Yeah. God, I hate my life. That one's by far the worst. One of the worst. Well, it's also one of the first ones to yeah. do that. Like, um, the Sugumi that's a 3-5. She top checks. If it's weapon or 
she's fine. If not, it goes to clock. That's essentially just helping me get to level mm -hmm. one where mm -hmm. I want to be. Yeah. Um, the 4K I was running in Idol Master, if it's a level zero or lower character when she's played, that um, card, uh, she goes into stock. Okay. So You're still getting stock. I mean, at that point, hey, I just got a free stock. I'm going to pay that stock to play something I was wanting to play. That makes sense. That's like uh, the ones that state, like, okay, top check when you play it. If it's not such and such, you're cool. But if it is, like, a level zero character, it, this, card go this card goes to your stock. Yeah. A lot of people have said, oh, well, that's cool. That's like you swung anyway. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't do any damage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so one can consider yeah. that a utility use of those. Yeah. I don't it's consider that utility. It's more along the lines of you kind of need stock. Say if I was at, for example, the one I was talking about. Say I had one stock. Okay. Play her. It's a level zero. She goes to stock. Pay two. Play my level threes. Yeah. Okay. That was my thought process on it, too. I mean, there's been lots of games where one stock would have changed the entire game for me. Yeah. And that is a long shot because you can't, you know, count on it. Yeah. But it will save your ass every yeah. once in a while. Or, um, hey, all right. It's a level zero. Goes to stock. Pay the stock. Brainstorm. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's true. Early game brainstorm can save you a lot of shit too. There's a lot of utility in having a free extra stock. No, that's not really a drawback, and it's, it's an not alternate function. Waiting for a turn, that's another thing. That's true. Because all right, I summon, swing. I may do damage. I may not. I made one stock, but I can't use it until next turn. Yeah. He's got a point there. Okay, no, I see where you're coming from on that. Like, you basically essentially get an extra stock right then and there. Yeah, it's a free stock immediately that you have access to. I mean, imagine doing that in... I'll admit to that. Imagine doing that in, like, Conti. Play this, it doesn't work out. Free stock, play Inaduma, swing, do your two damage. Now you've got the... Inaduma would have stock anyway from swinging. Well, I know, but now you've got an extra one floating there just in case, and you could brainstorm off of it. Okay, you got me there. That's true. <laughs> But just imagine what? something that has a effect of own swing pay one. Yeah. No, I see where that would come into play for Kantai, sure, Murasame. Yeah. That way I don't have to swing with something else first. I can understand yeah. that one. That's cool. Yeah. It's, at that point, you can play three copies, and you're, I mean, all three of them are live. And okay. I would do the same thing in Weapon Rares. It's like, I play the three Searcher Seshros at level one. I have the one free stock. On swing, pay one. On swing, pay one. On swing, pay one. <laughs> and plus two soul to make Kyle cry. Exactly. So. That'd be great. Oh, no, it was great. It, it, it was I very saw, great was watching him cry. Oh, by the way, uh, a mono plus two soul deck will be in the works. It, it, it'll be interesting shenanigans. Just for Kyle. Indeed. On any level, side for game? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, closing. One quick closing thing before we call it quits for today. Um, thoughts on the alarm slash shift abilities? I have not used them enough to yeah. have an opinion. I've only started to see alarm and yeah. shift. Shift isn't very common. Alarm, I don't care for. Shift, I liked with Kantai. Um, there was a clock swivel. Ushiokai. Talking about the green one? Little, yeah. Little green one. So I could switch her out with something like I mean, a freaking journey or whatever. That's always useful. Get that and, yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. That's better if, you know, they poke me and then that ends up being in my clock. And it's like, okay, no, that works out. No, that's, that's cool. But uh, um, shift, I see more viable than alarm. Alarm yeah. is usually best on the turn that you clock it. Mm. But if you know something else goes off where you're, you're about to refresh and it's yeah. no longer the top card of your clock. Oh, you, you know, edge me to, to two. Oh, you edge yeah. me to three. Here, here yeah. I go. Or especially, like yeah, if you clock it and you level. Yeah. It's, it's There's no point in it at that point. Yeah. I realize that n that's not always going to pop up, but... More often than not, I would somehow get fucked on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think I've seen anyone out here run Alarm or... I've ran into one card where someone was uh, using Alarm. Nick Counting used it. Um, There was an Ellie card. Or there, there was a card, Ellie's little sister from uh, Love Live. Mm -hmm. um, that you clock it, and during... Like, if, it's, if it's the top card of your clock, all your Ellie's get a buff. Right. It was really cool. But uh, that's basically the only th time I've ever seen it run. Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. I think uh, I don't think I was there because I've never seen him play, but maybe twice. Yeah, a homeboy that was playing this guy. I keep on forgetting his name because he's a new guy. Yeah. Um, he when I was playing him a couple weeks ago when we were here, 
before we did the uh, last. No, it was when we came in on Thursday to watch the SAO movie. Oh yeah, here yeah. in Greenville. Is uh, I was playing one of Kyle's friends, and he played an alarm card. And I'm like, wow, I, this is the first time anyone's ever used an alarm on me, and it was actually really useful for the turn that he did it. Cool I beans. can't remember exactly what it did, but this guy has got enough weird cards in it. And it also has alarm. So, yeah. all right. So with that, we'll go ahead and be uh, signing off for now. Um, any closing statements? Uh, not really. Not particularly. Okay. I mean, it just you have to. You really do have to stress the point that you build your deck around level threes and level zeros. Yeah. Essentially, I mean, the, not build around. You build it around the level threes. Yeah. Yeah. But the second thing you the look second at, thing that I look at is all the zeros. Yeah. Um. With that, thank you all for listening. Um, it's much appreciated. Please give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, check out Chris's uh, charity cost, uh, cast. Uh, yeah, charity cast. That's a good way to put it. Um, the D and D stream. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, fifth edition. It is I'm fifth edition. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. Um, not safe for kids. Not because weird, but because language. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you all. Uh, this is Kool Aid. We got Roku and Matt. And peace out for now. Yes.